leaders, officers, and servants. Grant, O oh God, that we may open our lips as we believe in God, that what we say with our lips and we believe in our hearts and practice in our lives. Give us this honor to lead your church. And may we be so love for the master and servant to get up here and we may soon be the leader of the family and master. Thank you very much. I want to talk to you on a simple topic. Officers desire to fight God. Officers desire to by God. Let us pray, Father. Speak now to your servants here. Consecrate us now, we pray, in Jesus' name. In our world today, we have so many suffering, so many heartaches, so many troubles, so so many questions that we ask. One of the common phrases that we use as church goers is, my pastor never visits me. I never see my pastor. He don't have a sister Jones, but he don't come at my house. First one, you need to get 
this afternoon, officers, that you are to be people of honest report. Nobody should point their finger at you. If they mean fire pointing their finger at the pastor, don't let them point it at you. It's not good. My father always said, anytime you make black people at the mouth, find it. You know, now we are going. <laughs> and I guess when he said that the black people meet everybody. Whenever you have anybody beating down on your name all the time and saying things about you, you know, it's like they are keeping you down. But I'm here to tell you, if you are men and women of an honest report, God will exalt you, hallelujah. God will oh, open your mouth as he will broaden your horizon and he will cause you to thrive and to be exalted in the earth. The second point from the scripture, my friends, it says that you should choose men and women full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This church don't like the Holy Ghost talking thing, but I mean that. And they say, when you talk about Holy Ghost, they talk about Pentecostal. <laughs> I tell you, I know I like a Holy Ghost, Pentecostal, Seventh-day Adventist, Seventh-day Baptist, Seventh-day Anglican, Seventh-day Catholic. <laughs> So I don't matter where you are, call me. But I know I was filled with the Holy Spirit in the garden of, of Castle Garden in the junction. I don't know who was on the road. I don't know who was on the That is down in St. Mary. Go Kingston, St. Andrew, go down Stony Hill, and go to in and Castle Garden. And someone just like today, we were fasting and prayer, praying in the garden. I used to take one summer out of every quarter in the life and go in the garden under the canopy of heaven. Sometimes we pray and rain falling on us and then the sun come dry and see a way. But we didn't care because we were seeking the anointing of God. And one Saturday afternoon, about three o'clock, the spirit fell upon me. I could not keep quiet, sister, 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 sister. I started to ball out. I started I started to praise God. I started to run up and down. I feel my big belly in front of me. So right down and touch my back. My chest was outside here like it was going to burst. And all they were saying, quiet now, TD. Now that's what they call. I could not keep quiet because the spirit took control. That is why I worship differently from all of you. Because I'm a new creator. I'm a brand new man. Oh, things are passed away. I am born again. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Officers of the Seventh day Adventist Church in the Lionel Town District, you are different. You are born again. You are baptized by water. You are baptized by the Spirit. And I believe that you should be baptized in the fire of the Holy Ghost. So your worship will be different. Your lifestyle will be different. And the Spirit of God will lead you to the great thing. So we must be filled with the Holy Ghost. And I remember the third point is that we must be officers of wisdom. Amen? The Bible says that 
Uh, if I do not go, I can, I will, I can ascend the comforter. Yes. Yeah. And when I send the comforter, when the comforter is come upon you, shall, you shall be made of wisdom. Yes, yes hallelujah. When the Spirit teaches you, you will be filled with wisdom. Amen. Amen. It's no ordinary meaning. When the Spirit is in contact with your soul, you will not gossip. You will not chat people business. You will not tell lie and what a lie about. Not the kind of lie means to say you will tell lie on it. Oh, you see, my sister also in that. The man is a my work, I'm up to instruct people in righteousness. So you must go to the house to tell her about Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. If you see me down, a sister comes to have you know, a sister comes and pass today. That they want her. No! When you are anointed by the Spirit of God and you are working with the Spirit of God and He puts wisdom in you, you think differently. You do not degrade. You do not put down. But you lift up. You have others to glorify God in the beauty of holiness. My brothers and sisters, when you have this wisdom, you 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 you, 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 you can be appointed over any business of the church. You can be the pastor. You can be the elder, you can be the deacon, you can be whatever God wants you to be in his worship or in his church because you are special in the sight of God. My officers, you are not a divinity, wishy-washy, pick and make and take, take kind of Christian. You are called out from above. Yes, sir. <laughs> All of us are here and we are called by God. We are called to accept Christ. And when you come to Christ, God does not keep you down there. He exalts you when you unveil yourself to be used. And so there are some of us who in the church is allowed by the Spirit of God to elect as officers. And so you are called out from among those who are called. So you're not ordinary. So you can't live ordinary like the other of us. You have to set the example. Amen. You have to set the example for the others to follow, Sister Joyce. You have to lead me in the path of righteousness. Yes! As you follow the Lord, so we follow after you. Oh, glory, I told you the other day. Oh, Sister Alexander, let me tell you, on the line we have some good times. But you cannot reach Ireland with Pastor. I'm telling you, no matter how you study, you can be fast and reach a certain level, you cannot get there. Because he's the leader. And if he's not following Christ, wherever he goes and he's doing his own thing, then you're going to do the same thing. So the pastor has to elevate himself. The deacon has to elevate himself or herself. The, 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 the head has to do the same thing. The, 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 the health ministry's coordinator has to do all of this and leave herself on the cutting edge or himself on the cutting head so that they can lift us up. And when we talk about Corona, they can bring hope from the word of God in this time of the pandemic. We must not be like the world. Worrying and running up and down as cowards, but we are to have the fear of God, and the fear of God is for us to love and be of a sound mind. And as I say, the angel of the Lord encamp around them that fear him, and he delivers them. Let me tell you something as long as Corona is around, it will not catch me because I believe that my God. So as men and women call of God, you're going to live appointed and anointed life. 
Not only when you come to church. And we are going to kiss you when you come to church. Right, sister? Some of us. We are going to kiss you when you come to church, brother King. I tell you, we did not do the service, though, it's never going to go to the different stuff. In Ghana, in a supermarket. And in our Western Union. Who? I said that one. I chose his stand. Then I say you, you know. Come and see that you know that. But now my vote of money for the Sister T. People are going to ask me, say, Pastor, I see if you go to Western Union, that's not much. <laughs> so I know it is happening, and they tell us they don't know that they owe, so they have to go down there. And they say, you're preaching too loud, you've cut the sermon, and you can catch it, please. <laughs> but brothers and sisters, you see, when you rely on God, you know that you can put on your pot with not even water, with a little bit of full of water, with a little chick again. You have food in there. Hallelujah. And when you, when, when, when you have dumpling and banana and you have cocoa in there, you don't have no meat, but by the time you leave the pot and say, I'm going to pray, you're going to think about me, go pray. God sent somebody near, so somebody knocking at the door, and you can't want a pound of fish come here, and somebody can't want a pound of pork, a chicken come here, so you can't chop it up and put the cabbage and the cattle and the pot chai with it. I'm like, oh, hallelujah. And when you turn you have a nice dinner. Yes, sir. That's the God you serve. He's an on-time God. Yes. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. And so, my friends, my brothers and sisters, you have chosen these wonderful ladies and gentlemen. Whom you have appointed to serve as your leaders in Christ. Today we are going to lay hands on them. We are going to pray for them. And my brothers and sisters, I am assured today that these men and women sitting up front and those who are down there will increase in God's knowledge. They will increase by spreading the word of God. Amen. Amen. They will increase in numbers and they will make other disciples who to know Christ is to know it is to have eternal life. And they will come and start the work all over again. They will multiply here in Daniel Town and in Portland Cottage and in Mitchell Town and in Raymond's, my brothers and sisters. And let me tell you something they will be obedient unto the faith of God. I want to bring your attention to 1 Timothy 3, where it talks about the bishop or the elder must be blameless. It not only for the elder, it's in every office. Amen? You must be blameless. And it says about the husband of one wife, and if you're a woman, a woman of one husband. Vigilant and sober. Of good behavior, giving to hospitality, apt to teach every officer in God's church, suppose you can deliver a sermon. Every officer can teach of the doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventist church. Amen. You must be hospitable when people come they must feel like they don't want to be here because of the look on your face. And it's almost in a good thing where we are lost nowadays. Yes, a little bit is a blessing, man. And some of your face is longer than the donkey one. Not a smiling person, not inviting. Oh Lord, but as a child of God, you should have a, 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 a welcoming face. A face that is pleasant. A face that says, even though I am stressed, even though 
I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil because Jesus is with me. I know the God I serve. I know him. I experience him. I feel him. I walk with him day after day. And so my friends, when you talk, you talk without putting your head in the ground. Because you know the God you serve. You must be men and women, not given to wine. I know a lot of you say a little wine for the stomach sick. Not having a name. Well, we get any cake. I mean, no, one person give me cake and it never have a run to do. Yeah, that's what I know, sister. Sister, you know, she's like, yeah, pastor, that's what I can't buy you. Hallelujah! I remember the days when I used to wake the cake with the wine, you know, I remember the time that I was. And so we did it out of my father and me. You see, I don't want to go back here and come in front of the steel front. <laughs> if it's still right there, I still in Jesus. Amen? No striker. You must not be greedy or filthy lucre or run down money. But nation. You must not be a brawl or go the road or cuscus people. Give me a purse and peace and you come out of the wild. You soon give up peace until you know that man. Yeah. You must not be confused, officer. You see, sister, to my own piece, my own king says, when you want one to. Satisfy with the number that man. It's comfortable, sleep, good in eyes. Don't worry about the king's hands. God will provide that in time. Don't become a just man. As men, especially, you must be rulers of the boats. A lot of material to write on the middle of the woman and a ruler. And it's full time you men be men. Amen. We know that's a good thing. Women lead men and tell men what to do. And if they don't do it, they get beaten. And the same way they want to tell the things at church that they want to run your hands. And when they want to see a church, sir. And tell us on so much. But brothers and sisters, the Bible says that that, that one that you should be one that rule well your home. You must command your children to be in subjection to the will of God. Mm. You must not be a novice. Let's be lift, lifted up with pride. Be fall into condemnation of the devil. Don't be boasters. Don't exalt yourself. But only yourself so that you can be exalted by God. And in the end, you will not be amazed because you are not a proud man or a boaster. But you will be lifted by God. My brother and sister, it says, moreover, you must have a good report of them which are without. So it's not only church people, but you can come here from far. In your community, people must see you and give you a good report. Amen? Anybody can come without your, 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 your knowledge and they're coming and ask anybody in the community about you. And then I'm going to get a little food for I know. Say, oh, since that's in there, it costs you as well. Costs out your deal like that's the thing thing I'm doing. Yeah. That was my granddaughter's word. Or so the daylight. I don't know what we So, officers, 
church members. All I'm saying to you today is that we are all called by God. We are all God's people and we must live holy lives. We must live lives that God can be pleased with us and save us into his eternal kingdom. May God bless you as you function as officers this year. May he guide you into all truth. And may you, my brothers and sisters, feel his divine presence propelling you and leading you in the path of righteousness. And you will lead others to know Christ and to know his life everlasting. May God bless you as you work in your several departments. May God bless your departments. May God open the way that your department will do well. And each department will give me a soul, a, 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 a soul goal. If it's even one for the year, you must can say our department will be one for Jesus this year. Amen? So I look forward to being in the baptismal pool more often this year. As I build up the kingdom of God, we build up the kingdom of God and smash the kingdom of the enemy. I pray that my visiting friends who are here with me will share in this job, will accept Christ fully in their lives and surrender to Jesus and let him have his way with you. But along the way, I read your aid that someone will go. You're fresh at night, dear man. The man stepped upright and showed us prayer when he was walking out. Yeah, tell you, I'm properly dressed up. Yeah, man, you know, see, we know which part of that. We know good. Yeah. All the while. Yeah. And it's not because his daughter and his son is here. Yeah. But he might always yeah. look good. We always look good. I like when I go to church, so that man is in sit at that bench. And when you see Sister Jones coming, walk go down there and he goes upright and like, sometimes I wonder if he's in the police. <laughs> yeah. But keep sweet in Jesus, man. It's because you're faithful to the Lord as a deacon. Why you look so good? God bless you with long life. That's a three score and ten and base and straight four score, but then you know what? Four score and ten! You want to give you 10 more, you want to give you 10 to see a hundred. Amen. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, brother, brother and honey. And keep sweet in Jesus. And we pray that your son and your daughter will commit their lives totally to God. So that when you're in a heaven, they won't be too. They're not only a rubber in the fact, but they're living in you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are going to pray at this time for our officers. So I'm going to invite all our officers to start.
us pray. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, your people have come into your presence today. Nothing in our hands we pray. But dear God, we are going to cling to that old rugged cross today. Because it was on that cross you shed your blood for me. It was on your cross you shed your blood for your officers. It was on the cross that you shed your blood for your entire people who are here today. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will forgive all our sins that we have committed in our lifetime. You will clean us up, Lord. You will fill us with your glory. You will fill us with your Holy Spirit. You will anoint us with your choicest blessing. And you will set your people free to work for you. I pray today that as officers and as pastors, we come before you consecrating ourselves to you. Lord, all that we have in us is wickedness and miserableness. But because we are assured that you are our king, you are our Lord, you are our leader, you are the leader of the Lord's post, we can stand assured and confident that you are going to lead us, you are going to direct us. And so we pray today for a fresh anointing. For some of us, we have been deacons for years, and elders for years, and deaconesses for years, and treasurers for years, and health ministry leaders, church ministry, and uh, personal ministry, and all the ministries of the church. We have been in it for all our life, but Lord, we have still not come up to the mark. Today, we are emptying everything and say, let us start afresh with you, Lord. We ask you to give us the strength. We ask you to give us the eyesight to see. We ask you to give us the wisdom to lead your people aright so that, Lord, this church will be a force to be reckoned with in each community that we serve. We thank you for the things you have given us to give away. Food. You have given us clothes to give away. You have given us the message to share with others around, oh Father. Let us continue to do the good work so that men will see our good works and glorify not us but our heavenly Father in glory. I pray, Lord, that you will anoint every deep and every elder, every, every department head that is here and every member that is called out to be a servant in your church this afternoon. Baptize us afresh, oh God. Unite us and cause us to be one. Let there be no division among your people. But let us be united by God and work together for the upliftment of your church and your kingdom here on earth so you can come to save your people. Yes. So I pray, O oh God, that you will consecrate every officer today. Yes. Consecrate every member who will work with these officers, O oh God. And maybe this year, 2021, do great things for you. And your people will grow numerically, your people will grow spiritually, and your people will be ready to be translated and to be transformed into your kingdom. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you for answering. Thank you for blessing and consecrating all of these officers today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. You may be seated. I think we are going on for closing hymn now. Sister Andy will announce that hymn. We'll sing and then we'll have the benediction. Praise the Lord. We want to thank our pastor who has been here today. Just want to hope and pray that we keep him in our prayers because he has done a great job. I just ask the Lord to keep him and to help him to excel in everything else that he do. At this time, I would love you to stand with me and turn your hymnals to number 222. 21, I'm sorry. 
Rejoice, rejoice the Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Rejoice, give thanks and sing, and triumph evermore. Rejoice, rejoice, the Lord is King. Bless you. 